皆さんこんにちは and welcome to Shogo's podcast. So today is going to be another story of the principles of my life, I guess I would say.、Um, it's about a belief that I have、um, of the true reason why it's best to read books, for example, to experience new things and meet new people and such. It's about life. Itself. And I believe that our lives are basically the stories that we write. And this is the conclusion, by the way. I'm saying this in the very beginning, but、um, basically, life is about the stories that we write, right? And、uh, in order to write a story, for example, if you're going to be writing a book, you need knowledge, right? If you, don't need, if you don't have knowledge, for example, if you didn't know about pirates, you can't write One Piece. If you didn't know about、uh, Ninja, if you didn't know about Chakra, You didn't, if you didn't know about Jutsu, you won't be able to write Naruto, right? How about we go for another one?、Uh, if you didn't know about samurai history, if you didn't know about katana, if you didn't know about、uh, comedy, <laughs> you couldn't write Gintama, my favorite anime, right? So this applies for real life as well. So, for example, on.、Um, I was thinking about this, by the way. The reason why I was thinking about this is because、um, I've. Because my first daughter is growing, I'm going to be turning four years old soon, and、I'm, there's going to be a timing when I have to tell her that she should read more books or do more studying. And, and I'm pretty sure that, that she'll tell me that, no, I don't want to do that. You know, it's too much hard work, you know, and stuff like that. And I was thinking of a good way to explain to her why it's always uh, better, uh, best to do it. And this, was, this is going to be my answer. Basically, reading, studying, meeting new people. Um, gives you a, a chance to, to change your story. So, what I mean is that if you only had, like, for example, three options, that's the only way you're going to be able to write your life.、Uh, let me try to give you a more concrete example so I can uh, uh, explain this、uh, a little bit easier, to make it a little bit easier to understand.、Mm, for example, when I studied about Tokugawa Yasu, For example, Tokugawa Iyasu、um, is one of the most fa- famous、uh, samurai warlords during the Sengoku War period, right? He was the man that built the Edo、uh, period, the、um, era that lasted for 265 years of peace. And he, he, he was ba- basically the last person who won the Sengoku War period that lasted for 150 years, you know, and also built the very peaceful time period of Japan that、uh, nurtured all of traditional history, almost all of traditional history that exists in Japan today. So he is. Such a, a very, very,、um, should I say, powerful person, very、um, important figure you know, in Japanese history. But did you know that you would think that, okay, so y e a s u had a lot of power, he was really strong, he was really smart, and、uh, all of the environment that he was given was perfect, right? But no,、um, the Edo, which is currently Tokyo, we have to remember that in the past, the Kanto region, which is the eastern side of Japan, was considered. A very barbaric land by the、uh, western side of Japan, which w- is where the capital used to be, Kyoto. Those, that side was very developed, but the eastern side was where all the warriors, the samurai, ronin, all those people lived. And it was considered like、um, so、most places were not even developed.、Um, the land that Tokugawa Iyasu was given for his land was actually a swamp, basically. He was given, after all of his achievements in war,、um, he was given because he was.、Uh, A little bit, be, it was cautioned by Totem Hideyoshi. The, the land he was given as a,、uh, a reward and ch- achievement of his achievements was a swamp, basically. And what you would think if you were given a swamp in a countryside area in eastern Japan at that time, you would think, why? I, I should deserve more, right? But Iyasu, no, he, that's not what he did. He, he said, okay, so this is going to be the area where I'm going to be building my dream、uh, country, you know, my dream、uh, clan, basically, you know. And、um, he did that on purpose because he knew that because originally the land was just, you know, completely undeveloped and no one wanted that land. You know, no one wanted where Tokyo is today in the beginning. But Tokyo Ayasu thought, okay, this is actually my chance because no one will be cautious of me building anything here. And he actually built the Edo、um, castle and everything, all of his land, his、uh, property, and everything there. And he actually succeeded in not having anyone suspicious about them because no one expected that that land, that swamp there, would become such an important place, right? So if you have 
this one story in your mind. Whenever you go come across a obstacle, you might be able to overcome it, believing that, well, if Iyasu could do this, maybe I could do it too kind of thing. I I'm pretty sure you understand where I'm getting here. For example, if you study about the lives of a very famous celebrity, for example, maybe hearing that that person actually grew up in a very abusive environment, but who it was uh, uh, a very, very under a very violent parent, for example, a father or mother, or uh, maybe a person on um, like like we you know we st study about you know like Walt Disney going through all this the uh, the, um, the troubles like Oprah and everything. Um, learning about these things will definitely become a chance for you to rewrite your stories. And for me, one of the biggest uh, foundings that I found through reading and studying and such is, for example, um, I love the uh, psychology that Alfred Adler has teaches us and teaches us teaches us. And it's about on um, people when something happens, we tend to find the reason for what why this happened or why this person did some this did this action. But he teaches that we shouldn't look for the reason why people do it. We need to look for the purpose of why that person did it. So in his explanation, um, let's say someone is a hikikomori. Someone, you, you know, hikikomori is it's a person who can't um, go out the side anymore and is in the house 24/7 and uh, is uh, mentally mentally ill. I would say can't go to school, can't go to work anymore. It's a big problem in Japan. A lot of uh, people are incapable of uh, living together in society because they're afraid. You know, um, if you hear or see someone who is a hikikomori, you would think, okay, it must have been the bullying that caused this person to become a hikikomori. Or, oh, it must have been um, the abusive family that caused this person to become a hikikomori. That's um, looking for the reason why this person became a hikikomori, right? But Alfred Adler teaches us, no, no, no. You shouldn't try to find a reason that caused this. Because if we try to apply A equals B in this in this case, it would mean that if someone gets bullied, they must become a hikikomori, right? But they're not everyone who becomes uh, who becomes a victim of bullying, for example, don't become a hikikomori, right? Then then this logic here, this calculation doesn't work. So what he teaches again is trying to look for the purpose. We don't try to look for what caused this person to become a hikikomori. We're trying to look for the answer of what, why this person became a hikikomori. And this gives us the clear answer to all the things that happen. Right. This was a really, really big impact in my life. So whenever someone did, does, for example, yeah, like for example, when I get hate comments, I would think, oh, if I was looking for the reason, it might be, oh, I might be because I said this or I acted like this. It's me that I'm that on, um, which, which I say did something wrong, for example. It's my fault, I would think, if I was looking for the reasons. But no, I need to look for the purpose of why this person says this hate comment. Because if this if this was for example my acting or what i said was a reason for this person to um say these hate comments to me i would need to everyone who watches my videos need to give me hate comments right but it's only a, a certain amount of people so thinking of their purposes it might be um they don't get enough improvement in their lives and they want somehow it could be any way they want people to look at them you know to give them a like it could be a hate it doesn't matter they just want attention because they haven't received enough attention in their lives that is the purpose of the people who give me hate comments right this idea gave me um change my life change the stories of my life basically. And I just keep up going about all the other things that I um, changed my life. But you know, if I can just give you another quick um, example, you know, I've talked about this before, but I personally believe my life is perfect. And this idea comes from, originally comes from Buddhism, where we believe um, the ideas of yin and yang as such too. But something can be small, for example, because something is big. If nothing is big, there is no small either, which means if there is no sadness in life, there's never any happiness. Because if, if we're always happy, there is no happy either. It will just be blank there, plain, right? There's ups and there's downs. So, which means, thanks to sadness, we can be happy. And thanks to happiness, we can be sad. It's always a balance of both sides. So it's never one side is really bad and one side is good. No, it's a balance of two things. If both sides don't exist, nothing will be there. 
nothing will be in our lives happening in our lives so that means we should be thankful for everything that happens in our lives right because if we've never been sad before we could never be happy either so that this idea changed my life too so whenever anything happens to my life i always tell myself my life is always perfect no matter what happens when i fall when i get hurt when i fail i always tell myself no my life is always perfect and soon i will understand why this happened to me yep and i might you know someday um be uh i'll suffer from a very terrible disease i might lose my limbs in an accident something might happen to me of course because we're alive but still i would definitely have this idea in me you know because life is not does not go on forever it's temporary our bodies are will eventually perish right so it's a matter of time you know and thanks to this ideas i was able to change my life a lot too so i would say this is the reason why it's always um really important that you try to study more as much as possible um learn about other people's lives read books and such listen to their experiences you know of our ancestors and the great people in history it's really it just simply makes our life much more rich because you get to rewrite your story your life can be better because it's a story that you've written it's a book that you've written about yourself the main character is you the protagonist is you and you've written a story So in in order to write a good story or the story that you want to write you need the right materials. And in order to get the materials you study. And if you can keep that in mind that really changes your life and it uh changes the way I would say your attitude towards uh studying anything meeting new people and such. So this is going to be what I'm going to be teaching my daughters from now on. So then everyone as I always say the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers dreams come true. So I know that there's a lot of people willing to study Japanese, uh come to Japan to travel or work or even train in our traditional culture and such. But I am very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the near future because we're facing a lot of social problems. We are losing our traditional culture and the younger generations who are supposed to be carrying on the good things about Japan are dying because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life to try to make Japan a better place. I want to try to preserve the traditional culture. on um, preserve and evolve traditional culture and also um help out the younger generations so they can have a brighter future and also try to solve the social problems so they can have a better life. And to do that the nearest goal I have right now is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023 on my main channel. So your likes and comments will help to boost my videos to new viewers who've never seen my channel before. So it'd be great if you can help me out. Thank you so much guys. And yes, we are working on um creating our merchandise. We do a weekly meeting and we're um making progress every week. I'm really really excited. Um if I can give you a little bit of some hints that we'll, that we're uh, what we're doing right now um for those of you who've listened to this very end for me thank you so much for listening to such a long podcast but so far we are working on making fans also mugs and t-shirts so far um uh, once we get the samples we'll definitely be making a video of on um, us introducing the merchandise to you. So I hope you look forward to that. Yep. And we are all working on our stage performances and also there are some good news in um field of tourism as well. So I hope you can look forward to all of these new ideas and plans and such. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.